tell us, Anna, about how you've been rewatching <laughs> the Star Wars movies. Yep, we started with one, and now uh, we just watched The New Hope. I mean, A New Hope. <laughs> but yeah, you watched like Rogue One in between yeah. the two. Yeah, That's we cool. didn't do Solo, but we put Rogue One in. Because it's fun to watch that right before A New Hope. Oh, yeah. I mean, it might be a little bit jarring. You know, it's just like, <clears throat> everyone. And then, oh, right back, right back into it. <laughs> but like in 1977 version. Right. <laughs> Princess Leia looks so low definition. Yeah, it's like, what happened? <laughs> yeah, you can tell something's different. They really but, tried uh, to like make it match up pretty well. Even like the hairstyles and stuff, I feel like they did a good job. Oh, yeah, the rebel soldiers and stuff. Right, if you make everything look vaguely like the 70s, then it fits. Yeah. <laughs> that's part of the Star Wars style. I like to think that, yeah. that's just It's not the 70s. This is just what this galaxy uh, fashion is like. <laughs> well, but I also said when I watched the prequels... It was fun, because now I recognize stuff that's in the Clone Wars. It was sad, though, because you watched them all die. Yeah, but watching watching the third <laughs> one, I was like, oh, there's that character I recognize. Oh, oh, they're dead. They're dead. <laughs> like, Kit Fisto had, like, the saddest <laughs> one-second death. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so bad. I feel like that's something you just have to not think about watching this series, because, like, every... Almost everyone you see here is going to die. <laughs> yeah, we were saying in one of the other episodes, there was one of the clones, and look up his Wikipedia article, and it's like, oh, and this is the clone that Yoda chops his head off on Catch. No. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. I know that. Yeah. No. And Yoda just does it just like that. <laughs> no remorse. Like a true Jedi, he doesn't become attached to the clones. There's no attachments. <laughs> uh, his, like his head. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry, is that too, too far? <laughs> but before we get to all the dark and dirty, we get to hang out with Zaboomafu! It was, I thought we were on Madagascar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We crash land. Madagascar. I mean, it's kind of the same plot as Madagascar. Oh, man. <laughs> it kind of is. <laughs> it's like uh, Pitch Black meets Madagascar. <laughs> that's, that's the mashup I've been waiting for. <laughs> um, Jedi Crash. And Crash They Do. Episode 13 of The Clone Wars. Season 1. We're making our way through. We're halfway through season one. That's right. And there's there's four of us here today, in case you couldn't tell. I'm Cody. Aaron. Daniel. I'm Hannah. Hi. I'm back. <laughs> hi. Oh, hi. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, oh. What? <laughs> um, yeah. Jedi crash. They crash, and then they uh, find some monkeys to heal Anakin. The end. <laughs> the end. <laughs> we have to talk about the... Uh, that's, that's great. That's the <laughs> Join us next had. time, everybody. <laughs> hey, we'll be here all night, folks. But yeah, no, this is uh, this episode. Uh, Ayla Sekiro, her flagship is under attack and requires the assistance of Anakin and Ahsoka. So they go and save her and get her onto a consular ship. But as they're about to take off, their hyperdrive gets damaged. Um, Anakin gets severely wounded and they end up crashing onto a remote planet where they have to travel through these savannah-type um, lands, fighting angry bird lions to <laughs> find the lemurs who live here. The lemurs they're looking for. <laughs> the lemurs they're looking for, who are pacifists. But they managed to convince them to send a healer, and they save Anakin, and that is the end of the episode. Well, yeah, and they're still on the planet. Yes. At the end. So, probably... A story arc? There is, yes. I think it has to be. I don't think that was the end. Oh, and we, I don't think I've mentioned it yet, but this episode was written by Katie Lucas, mm. George Lucas's daughter. Really? Yeah. Five-year-old daughter. Mom. Wow. Pro probably <laughs> older than and that. And then they crash on a planet. <laughs> and there's monkeys. And there's monkeys there. <laughs> and they roll around. <laughs> Uh, Isn't there a show where they did that? that like, Axe just Cop. took a kid. <laughs> yeah, that's, right, yeah, that's yeah. what it was. <laughs> and they animated all the stuff he was saying. Oh. I really liked the opening. That was oh, yeah. great. It was quite the exciting the oh, space fight. Way to start this off. Yeah, and the Republic loses, which is pretty crazy. Just outgunned. Well, yeah, they've got these cool rocket 
super battle droids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was crazy. Rocket droids. They're like flying down. One of those scenes where there's just like the whole screen is filled with stuff happening, robots and lasers and everything. Must have been crazy to animate, but yeah, I, I thought that was all great. The rest of the episode was fine, but I, I maybe wasn't as yeah. crazy about the rest of it. They were just kind of walking around through mm -hmm. the grass. Yeah, no, this buff battle scene was probably the best. Mm -hmm. And it was just one thing after another, and then they are going to crash into the sun, and then <laughs> they are, you know, all the stuff kept happening, one leading into the next crazy event until right, they... Right, and then it suddenly slowed down a lot. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like a two-part kind of thing. Like, the whole second half of the episode is them on the planet. Or, like, the first part was just an intro to this sure. new series, like this... And the next episode, maybe. Yeah, if you watch the whole story arc, that's just like the mm -hmm. opening scene. Mm -hmm. But for this episode, it, I mean, it's half the episode. <laughs> yeah, because they're so short. Um, there's like a droid commander that's like overseeing this battle. Yeah, oh yeah, this is the first time we see the T-Series tactical droid. That's what they're called? Wait, are there like multiple ones of them? Yes. Um, yeah, they were kind of built to be the tactical commanders since they obviously didn't couldn't think for themselves um but there's a couple of um there, there's one at least that's like a, a a character like a pretty consistent character for a couple of, was it more than one arc? interesting he got his own unique design this one apparently named tf1726 ah i'm trying to think how, how do you turn that into an, a word <laughs> i'm not seeing it yeah, we see how brutal they are, that he's able to um, take down a... <laughs> I don't yeah. think it's brutal, yeah. it's just his program. He's a robot commander. Mainly it was these rocket super battle droids, it was pretty cool. And he talks like this, he has like like a real <laughs> robot voice. The other droids saying, Sir, aren't there other droids on the ship? This is taking too long. Destroy that cruiser. But sir, there are still hundreds of droids on board. I don't care. <laughs> roger, roger. Uh, but Anakin and Ahsoka are doing like yep. a kind of last ditch rescue to save Ayla Secura off of her ship that's going down. But Anakin jumps onto one of the rocket droids and like rides. Yeah, rides it down that. through space. Well, they're in the upper atmosphere of a planet. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Yeah, I know. It was fun. I, like, I liked all this action. Good job, Katie Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else she's done. I I would assume she's done other things. It's just like, compared to the last episode, this is great. <laughs> what happened to the last one? So was bad. that one bad? Mm -hmm. uh, it was okay. It wasn't terrible. I didn't think it was that bad, but as we were talking about it, I just... We started realizing it didn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> oh, she's actually written quite a few episodes. Oh, okay. We'll have to watch for her showing up again. But yes, they save Ayla Secura and they go on to um, one of these ships. She is Secura now. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Ayla Secura. <laughs> That's what they say when they get her in the ship. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, Anakin kind of sacrifices himself to get all of them on the ship. Yeah. It's like the docking tube explodes. I wasn't expecting that to happen, I should say. Yeah, it was a nice switch up. Yeah, it was It was nice to see Anakin, you know. <laughs> just just about dying, <laughs> crippled, and pain. Yeah, interesting <laughs> dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. I, I understand what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, it was nice to actually see more, two of uh, some of the other Jedi Knights. Ayla Secura, obviously one of the more popular ones. Actually, is this like the first time we really see much of her? Yeah. Yeah. In this show. We haven't seen her yet in the show. So I didn't even know her name. What, you didn't know her name? <laughs> Are you going to kick me out? Well, I don't know. Not I everybody is. I knew it before I saw this. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I knew that. I guess uh, Battlefront 2, maybe? I mean, we, we've said this on other episodes, but there is a whole lot of stuff and characters in Star Wars that don't get named in the movies where you oh, see yeah. them that you don't even realize. Mm-hmm. They don't have name like because everyone knows about them from all this outside, uh, all these outside sources, games and movies and whatnot, <laughs> or, or shows. Like for instance, the trash compactor monster. Yeah, the Dianoga doesn't get yeah. called anything. But in fact, it has a whole varied backstory and is apparently force sensitive. And what? well, that I'm still not <laughs> sure about that. that. That's what Wikipedia was telling us. 
must be true. Uh, the ship is damaged while they're trying to escape, and like uh, the hyperdrive is activated, and they can't turn it off. That's a really bad problem to have. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. Like, never seen that happen in Star Wars before, but it kind of like I could see that happening. You know? Yeah, that's the opposite problem that. The Millennium Falcon kept having. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. I mean, I like this whole part just because you're kind of experiencing like, yeah, what happens when things go very wrong on your ship? Yeah, for instance, you spiral into a star. <laughs> I like how they're okay because they didn't quite touch the star. They're like, oh, we're so close to it, but... <laughs> good point. <laughs> That's how the sun like, works. Yeah, do you just burn up? Oh yeah, I mean you could tell that they were getting they got like, a little singed. Yeah, a little singed. Yeah, so. if you were that close to it, you would. And then they immediately crash on a planet. <laughs> That's somehow not total molten lava. There's <laughs> lemurs living here. Somehow. It's like oh, yeah. way too close this to this. planet sun. is right next to... Oh. Yeah, they must have been going Again, it's this is fast. Star Wars isn't <laughs> well, as concerned about the yeah. science. It's okay. Right, because Star Wars, like, every planet has breathable air and they speak English. And the gravity is the same. <laughs> you don't know what's out there. Can you breathe? No. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> 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 Galaxy Quest. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the point that made me think of Pitch Black. <laughs> what is that? Vin Diesel. Riddick. That's a Riddick um... movie. They crash land on a planet that goes into a very long night period where monsters come out and they have to fight them off till mm. the sun comes up again. Yes. Okay, I see the similarities. <laughs> it's pretty clear. There's something stalking them in the tall grass, yeah. right? It's raptors. Oh, it's bird lions, but a bird lion. It's a uh, griffins. Right, without wings. <laughs> yes, just the beaks. So bird lions. You got it. <laughs> and once again, there's the one named clone, the general, and all the other expendable guys. They do have names. They name them. Yeah, it, it does. Um, when they die. They <laughs> when they die. After, after, after they were dead. <laughs> yeah. That's Just how we so knew. you know, these three names. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, Rex is here. He's going to guard Anakin. Uh, who else is here? Cameron or something? Uh, two more of the beasts attack the group, killing Cameron, Lucky, and Flash. Oh. How could we forget Lucky and Lucky. Flash? Oh, yeah. One of the clones is called Bly. Bly? He's the commander. He's Ayla Secura's. How do you spell that? B-L-Y. Oh. Captain Bly was... Mutiny on the Bounty. Oh. I don't know. I think it's spelled differently. Star Wars takes names from a lot of different things, though. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised. Like, they take names from all kinds of different sources. Ahsoka's name is from something like indie uh, philosophy or history. I don't actually know. But I kind of don't think it means anything. Like, in this context, I think they just picked it. <laughs> and I think that's the case with a lot of Star Wars names. It just sounds cool or brings something to mind, but I don't think it has a lot of significance. I should, I'll find out what Ahsoka means, and I'll let you know on one of the future episodes. Well, I'm, I'm just, I'm at the edge of my seat. I want to know what it means. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I looked I, it up, if you want to know. Yeah, sure. Like, sure. It's a, it is an Indian name. It means without sorrow. Hmm. It came oh. from Ahsoka the Great, the third century BC emperor of India. Oh, really? Cool. There you go. Yeah, they're on this planet. It's kind of like a savanna, like, you know, tall grass and, like, large random trees every now and then. Yes, with big pods that fall out of it. Yes. Big acorns. Kind of. I thought those lemurs were going to live in the trees, but apparently the acorns are so big that they're dangerous and they almost crush the group. <laughs> so. Yeah, I really thought they were throwing them at them. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's why the lemurs also left. <laughs> they kept getting crushed. <laughs> the deadly acorns, I don't know. <laughs> You'd have to be crazy. What a way to go. Maybe there's giant lemurs up in the tree. Oh, the monkeys are living in the acorns. I didn't even like... Oh, those are acorns from the trees, those giant lemurs? Yeah, yeah. And they drag them out here. That's why they, they drag them, to live in them. That's how they found them. They followed the trail, mm -hmm. yes. And then they were all set up. Like a ton of them. It's a whole society here. Little pod monkeys. <laughs> pod lemurs. I like to move it, move it. I know, that's what I kept thinking. <laughs> There's, I, there should be a deleted scene where they all... There, I'll do that edit too. <laughs> 
What's his name? King. Oh, King Julian. (laughs) 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 He's a lot more fun than these guys. Yeah, they don't really seem like the partying type. Were they like. Is that a Irish accent or Scottish? Yeah. I'm just like, what are these, like, Irish lemurs? The music that's playing with, like, these pan flutes, and then some of the hairdos, that's all making me think, like, South America Incans or Aztecs or something. I don't don't know Mm. which. You know what I mean? Sure. But then when they speak, yeah, it's all, like, these Irish or Scottish accents. (laughs) Mm -hmm. What's, uh, what's Ayla Secura's accent? Yeah. Good question. Yeah, I was wondering that too. <laughs> it's a uh, Twilight. Oh, of course. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars. Right. How do we all speak in British accents when we're in outer space and there's no Britain? Hmm, I say. <laughs> Thumb wars. <laughs> the lemurs are called Lerman. Wow, that sounds a lot like lemur. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just Lerman, you know, lemur men. Oh. An abbreviation. Yeah. No, it's not. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no women, just Lerman. Lerman. And Lerwomen and Lerchildren. Lerman, <laughs> like human. Like how human are uh, hues. <laughs> the hue species. Of course. Just in man form. <laughs> Anthropomorphized hues. Yes, <laughs> yes. What? I don't. You're. <laughs> You're losing me. This is a weird (laughs) trail to go down. Anyways. uh, (laughs) Talk about how they roll around like Sonic. No, they roll around like uh, destroyer droids. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, that was very strange. Yeah, this is is the wise old lemur. It's like trying to tell them how to be peaceful, I guess. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Whatever. Whatever, man. No, no. I liked some of their stuff. When he's talking with Ayla later, I liked some of that. She's trying to explain to him, like, we're fighting to keep the peace, and he's saying, like, well, you're still, you're still fighting. I am sure you are aware that the Jedi did not initiate the Clone Wars. Our only intention is to end it and restore peace to our galaxy. What difference does it make who started the war and who only wants to end it? No side is free of fault. It takes two to fight. But isn't liberty worth fighting for? But is it worth killing for? Fighting for something doesn't necessarily mean you have to destroy everything in your path. Only when you lay your arms down and pursue a course of non-violence can you make this claim to me that the Jedi are peacekeepers. I don't know. I, th- I liked that idea. Yeah. I thought, well, what's the difference? Is there a difference? I don't know. They don't answer the question. Right. It's just something to think about. And the whole theme that comes back uh, in different ep- various episodes of, you know, what are the what should the Jedi be doing here? Like, what is the right course of action? Mm-hmm. Feels like they're kind of forced into fighting this war, but like, are they really? Is there another course they could have taken that they're just not looking for? Or I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't really know the answer to that. I will not condone a course of action that will lead us to war. Mm, there you go. <laughs> but they do condone it. Or they at least they uh they go right into it. Yeah. They weren't from this planet, were they? It's no. Not like they, no, no. They'd come here to escape from yeah, the, the wars. The Lermans are originally from Maigito. Oh. What's that? Very interesting. That's that's the planet that um Kiaru Mundi was on in the in episode three, I think. Mm-hmm. Is he the tall head guy? Yes. Yeah, tall, yeah, conehead. Yes, the conehead from SNL. Coneheady Mundi. <laughs> Perfect. Wow. It's actually, Dan Aykroyd in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, no, they had to leave their planet because the war came there. These uh, bird things are called mastiff phalones mastiff isn't that a kind of dog oh it is Hmm. and i i thought that they because like they go and save uh anakin and rex because they're getting attacked by these things yeah they started to like wrangle them you know cattle wrangling I thought they were going to, like, ride them back, you know? Oh. Like, transport Anakin by riding one. But I guess they 
haven't figured out how to do that yet. <laughs> I think it was, yeah, just an alternative to killing them. Yeah. To show how peaceful these monkeys are. So how long are they going to be on this planet? We don't know. One more episode. One the more rest episode? of the series. Right. <laughs> well, this is when the series takes a sudden turn and the whole rest of this. <laughs> Can you imagine? All the lemurs as side characters. <laughs> how great is that? Uh, we're, we're, we're going off on so many rabbit trails. <laughs> Okay, so how does it end? So the healer monkey heals Anakin. Yeah, then they're just hanging out. That's that's it. And then at the end, they say, we still need to find a ship. It's not over yet. We're still stuck here. Yep. And then it is so, over. Uh, well, yep. until the next episode. I hope that the rest of the Republic fleet was able to follow their hyperspace trail. But hopefully they don't follow it into that star. <laughs> <laughs> right into Doo -doo -doo. the star. Oh, no! Yeah. <laughs> That's the day the Republic fleet oh my God. flew into a star, <laughs> never seen again. Well, that was uh, episode 13 of um, season one, Jedi Crash. You guys excited for episode 14, Defenders of Peace? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Ooh, okay, reading the summary. Oh, don't read mm. summary. Oh, spoilers. I, I wasn't going to say it. I didn't even say it. <laughs> You're spoiling you said it, for it has a summary. That's already a spoiler. I'm supposed to watch the episode without accidentally reading the one sentence under the title. And all you can read is all you can read is the moral because that <laughs> oh tells you gosh. nothing. Yeah. What was the moral for this oh, yeah. one? This one. What, hold on, I, I, made, I wrote it down. Greed and fear of loss are the roots that lead to the tree of evil. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so it's basically what Yoda tells Anakin in episode one, kind of, but but with a tree metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> Roots don't lead to trees. They are part of the trees. Well, it depends how you look at it, isn't it? You could say they are the roots of the tree of evil. <laughs> mm. Oh, how is this? There were giant trees, evil giant trees, and then they squished them? Oh, no. The tree itself is evil because it tried to kill them. <laughs> oh. You think these quotes are giving us like the, the key to unlocking what's really happening in these episodes? Well, it kind of works with this one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe. It always feels like a bit of a stretch. Yeah. Maybe. All right. Defenders of Peace next time. Hey, yeah. Bye. Unless there's anything else anybody wants to. I think uh... we covered that pretty thoroughly. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll stop it. <laughs>